Good morning. Today, I would like to share with you a reading comprehension strategy to help students with reading. I will start with a brief explanation of the directed reading thinking activity followed by a modeled example. Then I would like you to create a DRT activity for your students with your online text. We will close with a short sharing of ideas at the end. The Common Core state standards state that students can be able to or should be able to cite specific textual evidence to support analysis of science and technical texts, determine the central ideas or conclusions of a text, and compare and contrast findings presented in the text of those from other sources, including their own experiments, noting when the findings support or contradict previous explanations or accounts. This last standard is what has led me to look more closely at the directed reading thinking activity. Students come to a science lesson with many preconceptions about a topic, and an integral part of clarifying their ideas is reading a science text for comprehension. The, direct reading act, the Directed Reading Thinking Activity, DRTA, is an, a comprehensive strategy that can be used to help guide students before reading by having students look at their prior knowledge, think about questions during reading, and reflect on them after reading. Good readers make predictions and verify them as they read. Note that this strategy is for any text, not just science, but I'm focusing on the science text for biology, chemistry, physics, and math because I'm in the science math department. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started with a short video that briefly explains the DRT and we'll go from there. So let me share the screen here and get us started. Okay, that gives you a rough idea um, about what the directed reading thinking activity is all about, um, helping guide students. So let's model this strategy with reading from an online physics text. Um, in the process of doing this reading, um, I have two graphic organizers that students would be using, um, and you can find those in the shared Google Drive. Um, so. Let's go ahead and get started with this example. So I'm using an open source text here. And again, I'm gonna be jumping between screens here sharing. So if we have the text that we are using, 
this is a, a, a section on acceleration. So the students would have talked about displacement and velocity, and we've worked up to acceleration. And so the idea is before students would read this short text that I've chosen, which is not extremely long, but again, this is an introduction and things would be broken into parts. We're guiding the students through this reading. Um, we're going to ask them to try to do some pre-reading thinking and come up, with, come up with some questions. And so let me share with you what those questions are. Um, so the graphic organizer here, and I'll expand this a little bit. I put them on the same page because, um, um, so you can see everything. And so we would start with these directed reading questions, reading and thinking activity questions. Let me narrow it down just a little bit so that you can just see that section for the time being. And what we have here is directed reading, thinking questions for students to think about before reading, what they know about the material, again, before reading, after glancing at the headers, the pictures, the bold faced words. Um, what they think they'll learn about. And then after reading, they're going to write down what they know. Um, now to help guide them with this, they might need some extra questions to think about. So let me, these anticipation questions I came up with for this reading, you would have to come up with specific questions for the sections you are reading, but it's a simple agree or disagree, yes, no type questions. So for example, for this reading, it's about acceleration. Acceleration can mean getting faster. And the students say, yes, I agree, or no, I don't agree. So let's go back to the text. Um, how can we get started before we read? How can we help the students with understanding what they're going to be reading about? So some things to do, look at the titles, the headers. Look at the illustrations. Um, so for example, we have an airplane. And so it says a plane decelerates or slows down. Um, I go through, I see a key word, acceleration. I see a box, this is a definition, average acceleration, and it gives a formula. Um, because of the place we are in the text, the students would understand this delta, Greek letter delta stands for change in. And so a change in velocity over change in time. Um, we look, I glance through the text, uh, another box acceleration is a vector. And students have already learned about vectors having magnitude and direction. But in this case, velocity is a vector. Displacement is a vector. Uh, then I see the keyword deceleration. I see another diagram with some arrows in it, vectors of velocity vector pointing one way, of acceleration vector pointing the other. And then I see a, a box that <clears throat> says misconception alert. That should give the students an idea right away. This is something important. Deceleration versus negative acceleration. And there's four images with vectors pointing different directions. Um, here we have a vector pointing to the right for velocity, so it's moving to the right, and an acceleration to the right. And so that is one diagram. The second one is motion is to the right, but acceleration is to the left, they're opposite directions, but the car is still moving to the right. But C and D, the cars are moving to the left, which according to this coordinate system is in the negative direction because going to the right for this coordinate system given is to the positive direction. Um, and so here we see that vectors are pointing opposite directions. And here we see that they're pointing the same direction. So the idea is we read through this text together and try to answer it. So let's go back to those anticipatory questions um, and, and think about this for a moment. And so here we have, um, it says that I agree or disagree. I think this reading is about, let me make this a red X, acceleration can mean getting faster. Okay, well, glancing at the text, okay, a student would say, probably say, yes, I, they agree acceleration means getting faster. A student looks at the text, just glancing at the, the keywords and acceleration can mean slowing down. Uh, we just said deceleration was slowing down. Deceleration means getting faster. Well, I saw the word deceleration, but that meant slowing down. Okay, again, this is what students are thinking. Changing direction is acceleration. Mm, I thought changing direction was changing velocity. If acceleration is in the direction of motion, the object is getting faster. Okay, I think that makes sense. Negative acceleration is slowing down. Well, yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so this is, these might be what students think when they look at this reading. 
So let's go back using some of these anticipatory questions before reading, look at the section headings, pictures and boldface keywords. What do you know? Well, when students look at this, they're gonna say, I know acceleration is about cars getting faster. So they would write this down. Acceleration is about cars getting faster. Okay, that might be what they think. Now, again, this is a student writing these things. What do you think you know about this material? Well, that might be a little more difficult. Um, and so cars getting faster, you might say, oh, I just deleted it, let me go back. Let's see. Ah, okay, well, it's not here, but we might say that I think this material is about um, acceleration. Let me type it here. Acceleration is about getting faster. Deceleration is about getting about getting slower. So this might be what a student thinks. And so this is what the student has here. Let me make that purple because I like purple. Oh, pardon me. Purple. Okay, what do you think you will learn about it from reading this text? Well, this goes back to the anticipatory questions. Acceleration is a vector which has direction. That's what, from just glancing, this is what you probably think the reading will be about. Um, and so this is what students have before they read. Acceleration is about cars getting faster. I think I'll know, what I think I know about this material is acceleration is about getting faster, deceleration is about getting slower. What I think I will learn is acceleration is a vector and acceleration has direction. And so this is initially what the students are gonna think about when they read. So then we would go back to the text and I would have the students read the text. And so I, I would choose a student. So I'd say, for example, Elif, could you please read the caption under the image here? And so Elif reads, a plane decelerates or slows down as it comes to a landing at St. Martin. Its acceleration is opposite the direction of its velocity. Well, that was one of the first questions in our anticipatory questions. Acceleration means getting faster. Well, here it says deceleration means getting slower. Okay, so already I'm thinking, the student is thinking about some things they thought about. I ask another student to read, an everyday conversation to accelerate means to speed up. The accelerator in a car, in fact, causes it to speed up. The greater the acceleration, the greater the change in velocity over a given time. The formula, the formal definition of acceleration is consistent with these notions, but more inclusive. So we get to our box, average acceleration. Average acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes. So acceleration or average acceleration is delta V over delta T, which means change in velocity over change in time. And the students are familiar with this notation. Because acceleration is a velocity in meters per second divided by time in seconds, the SI unit of acceleration is meter per second squared. Now, this is very important because meters per second squared or meters per second per second, which literally means how many meters per second the velocity changes each second. Um, and so the idea of acceleration is simply velocity over time, velocity, how the velocity is changing. And so the velocity is getting greater and greater by a given unit over a given time. It's getting faster by, let's say, 10 meters per second, but each second. So it's going 10 to 20 to 30 to 40. So its velocity is changing by the same increment. Um, recall that velocity is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction. This means that the change in velocity can be a change in magnitude or speed, but it can also be a change in direction. For example, if a car turns a corner at a constant speed, it is accelerating because the direction is changing. Okay, that's an important idea. I'm moving with the same speed, but my direction is changing. So that's acceleration. Even though my velocity, pardon me, even though my speed is changing, my, direct, my speed is not changing, my direction is changing. So by definition, that is acceleration. The quicker you turn, the greater the acceleration. Well, again, this is why Amusement parks are fun because of the acceleration, a roller coaster, big accelerations. So there's an acceleration velocity changes either in magnitude or in direction. Again, acceleration is a vector in the same direction as the change. Acceleration is a vector in the same direction as the change in velocity. 
Since velocity is a vector, it can change either in magnitude or direction. Acceleration is therefore a change in either speed or direction or both. So let's go back to those anticipatory questions. As students are reading through this text, they are gonna go back and they're gonna look at this and they're gonna think there might be some changes. So acceleration means getting faster. Yes, that is correct. Acceleration means slowing down. Well, actually, let's see. It's not necessarily true. Um, we just read that acceleration is a change in velocity. And so let's, acceleration means slowing down. A change in velocity could be getting faster or slower. So technically, this should be agree. So students can go back and adjust, modify, rectify their thinking. Deceleration means getting faster. Okay, that's correct. I disagree. Changing direction is acceleration. Okay, we just read that a change in velocity isn't a change in direction. So again, this is agree. If acceleration is in the direction of motion, the object is getting faster. Okay, and negative acceleration is slowing down. Well, that could be, but it doesn't have to be. And so this is sort of a question mark. This could be two different answers. It could be, yes, negative acceleration is slowing down, or it could be that it's getting faster. So let's, let's let me erase this, big eraser. We, we're modifying our anticipatory questions. Um, and so this is what we see after we are reading. Um, let's go back and finish up looking at the diagram at the end, which is a very important thing to look at. It says, keep in mind that although acceleration is in the direction of the change of velocity, it is not always in the direction of motion. When an object slows down, its acceleration is opposite to the direction of its motion. This is known as deceleration. So again, another image, a subway train in Sao Paulo, Brazil, decelerates as it comes to a station. It is accelerating in the direction opposite the direction of motion. And we can see the vectors here, velocity in one direction, acceleration in the opposite which leads to the last diagram, misconceptions alert, deceleration versus negative acceleration. Deceleration always refers to acceleration in the direction opposite the direction of velocity. Deceleration always reduces speed. Negative acceleration, however, is acceleration in the negative direction in the chosen coordinate system, which is usually the Cartesian coordinate system with X in the positive direction and negative X to the left. Negative acceleration may or may not be deceleration, and deceleration may or not be considered negative acceleration. What that means, looking at the diagram, is that if the vectors point in the same direction, velocity acceleration vectors, it's getting faster in a positive direction. If they point in the same direction, but the opposite way, D, the car is getting faster, but in a negative direction. So here we have negative acceleration, but getting faster. Here we have positive acceleration, but getting faster. If the vectors point in opposite directions, the car is slowing down. And so B, it's decelerating in a positive direction. And C, they're pointing in opposite directions, but it's decelerating in a negative direction. Now I've summarized that, but if you look at the, the, the caption below, it says, for example, C, the car is moving toward the left, but slowing down over time. Therefore, the acceleration is positive in our coordinate system because it's to the right but it's slowing down in a negative direction. So it has positive acceleration, but slowing down. And here we have positive acceleration, but getting faster because it's about the direction of the motion. And so the last caption here, when we go back to the graphic organizer, negative acceleration is slowing down. It can be, it could be either. So let's go back to what students are thinking after they've made the reading, thought about what they know and thinking about other concepts of the anticipation, they write down what they learned. And so again, I've typed this up, but for example, students may write something like acceleration is a change in velocity, which includes also change in direction. That's from the text and it's from what the graphic organizer showed and from what they thought. Um, Two, if the acceleration vector and the velocity vector point in the same direction, the object's getting faster in either the positive or negative direction. If acceleration vector and the velocity vector point in opposite directions, the object is getting slower. 
in either the positive or negative direction. And that's what this last box indicated. So that is, that is a, a rough outline of how the RTA, uh, the DRTA pro process can be used. Um, and so direct reading thinking activity, you are simply guiding the students before they read with some questions to think about to help them focus. And then they have something to look for while they are reading. And then after they read, they make some comments about what they did learn. Um, and it's a very useful tool. So this is where we are at. Now, it's important that students are able to do this. So the direct reading and thinking activity helps students become active readers by directing them to think about what they will be reading, giving them some guiding questions and letting them predict a few things. Then students read and look at the predictions, making modifications when necessary, which is what we did with the anticipatory questions. And then after reading, they reflect on what they have predicted and, and write down what they learned. And so that's the process. So now what I'd like for you to do is have a chance to think about how you would deal with your class, your content area for this activity. So I'd like for you to take about 10 minutes um, using the graphic organizers that are in the, in the Google Drive. Um, I'd like for you to find a section in the e-text for your respective course book, biology, chemistry, physics, or math, um, and find a section, a, student, a section the students would be reading and think about the topics the students would be learning about and come up with five, six anticipatory questions to help guide the students in their reading. And after you've done that, we'll come back and we'll have a, a brief comment to think about um, how the DRTA can guide students. And so using this, um, it can really benefit and hopefully improve some of the comprehension of your reluctant readers in your class. So go ahead, take 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes is over. Um, and we will work with this. So um, you've had a chance to put some things down. Um, please share with me. I will discuss it with you. Um, and this coming academic year, I hope you can use some of these ideas. Um, again, the idea is we would have to, we may need to guide the students a little at the beginning, but the goal is to get them to be doing this on their own um, for their readings later on. So again, thank you and happy learning.